Can you name a, a culture that banks are protecting? Is it is it white supremacy? Hey, I, I, I would I would say some things, but hey, what do you think? I mean, I like I haven't thought about a name like that, but I do totally agree with you that it's absolutely a culture and I can describe the culture. The culture is um, a one in which bankers feel like they can decide who should have money, who it, it is logical has money. Um, and that is the kind of decision that led to Jabari not being able to withdraw his own money to buy a car. Because somebody looked at him and said, it doesn't make sense for this guy to have money. Um, and I think that there are examples of that all the way up the ranks in the financial industry, those kinds of judgments, like, should you be here? It's not just a bank teller making this kind of judgment. I listened to the Sunda Duckett talk about her time um, in the financial industry. She's now the CEO of TIAA Craft. She's incredibly powerful, incredibly accomplished. But she talked about, and I put this in the book, um, the encountering people in her career who clearly felt like she didn't belong there. Mm -hmm. And that is, the, that is the culture that needs to change. How insurance works if you're black. It doesn't. Um, and, and what was important to me about that chapter is the significance of data accessibility. Um, one, can you talk about um, the the structure of insurance and how it's always weighted towards white um, people getting more out of their um, fees than for blacks. But, but talk about the importance of data um, for policy change. Sure, so insurance, the, the basic concept is that, you know, you buy a, a huge thing like a house or a car, you get an insurance policy. If something bad happens to that giant asset, the insurance company is supposed to make you whole. Um, so it's a way of preserving wealth. You have to pay for the policy repeatedly. Um, the uh, insurance company gets to decide how much your policy costs and how much the asset is worth. So right there, you have uneven treatment in um, different parts of the country in different neighborhoods. And as we were talking about before with uh, property appraisals, the owners being black are devalued. The, the property is devalued if the owners are black quite often. Um, this uh, seems to happen a lot in, in insurance, but what I also found was that on the other end, there's different treatment where when you are, you are black and you're living in a black neighborhood and you have a, an insurance policy and something goes wrong, you file a claim, an adjuster says, are you committing fraud? Because there's a lot of fraud in your area. And um, insurers, so like in lawyers for um, insurance customers see this happening, but they can't really prove the big picture because insurers don't have to disclose any data about what they're charging people and what they're paying out in the end. We can't synthesize all of that. They say that the information on the payouts is a trade secret. Um, that Yet they really can use doesn't... that data to create products for themselves, but that's another. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, not, only do, not only does that make no sense, because <laughs> there's all kinds of data floating around in the financial industry that's similar to that that isn't a trade secret, but um, the Wall Street Journal actually found that the data is uh, accessible to all insurers through a trade group. Um, so somehow though, like federal and state officials have not managed to call them out on that. Part of the problem is that insurers aren't regulated at the federal level, they are regulated by states and you know, you've got 50 different states, 50 different people overseeing insurance, nobody has the money the organization isn't there. It's not like you have these, you know, we have really powerful banking regulators, but insurers just really get to do a lot more with so much less scrutiny. So about data, there's a great way 
that this could be fixed. We have a law called the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act. It requires lenders to file all kinds of information. It requires banks to report uh, the terms of the, loan, the home loans that they give to people, including who those people are, including their race. This was put in place to help stop redlining. It hasn't worked perfectly at all, but it's a way better, it's way better to have the data than not have it. You can compare what banks are doing in different neighborhoods and what banks are doing by the race of their customers. There is no such disclosure requirement for insurers, and there's a movement to, um, to get insurers to make those disclosures, but so far, there's really not a lot of traction. The point that I've made absolutely about the just huge cost of being black in the 20th and 21st centuries, that it's not like slavery ended and then Jim Crow ended and then everything was fine. It's just constant sapping of wealth from the black community. I agree with that entirely. Um, the, uh, not just agree with it, I mean I described it, but yeah, I agree with the, the fact that there needs to be restitution. However, if you're looking at mechanisms, you're looking at a corporate America where you have like these legal recourses, you have lawsuits, you even have giant settlements like the National Mortgage Settlement, which the banks had to pay into to uh, supposedly fix what they had done to, in the lead up to the financial crisis and making all these bad mortgages. It's peanuts. And the, the way to even get to that was like a ton of legal action. And what I'm saying is we need to use like, like deep understanding of the horror to bypass the legal system and get corporate America on board to change everything. Like we can't just keep suing people. Right. Like it's not enough. 